On Tuesday, the CBRM made a move a little closer to tagging on additional fees to our water bills. Right now, all of our wastewater management is paid by taxes collected in the base rate on our properties. And the proposal is to move this to user fees, which means we're gonna get a bigger water bill. Water bills and now wastewater are just another way to pay more taxes. You can move them back and forth from a tax to a service fee and define them as you wish, or you can keep collecting tax and charge the fee too. Hi, I'm Joe Ward of Boxer Shorts Media, and I'll do my best to keep this concise. I don't want to join the predictable parade of jumping on this without acknowledging any of the nuance. This is something that is fair in principle. It's something that reflects some supportive principles in water usage reduction, but it's also something that allows the CBRM that is becoming increasingly more desperate for revenue to scrape the bottom of the barrel a bit more than they already have. Let's say you agree that you shouldn't have to pay for what you don't use and you don't have water or sewer hookups at your home. Now that's a reasonable position to take. I just talked about the same thing from the perspective of homeowners in Howie Center, Coxeath, and Westmount, who now primarily subsidize CBU's bus service to get students who are renting in their communities back and forth to school. So if you're paying for this infrastructure in the base rate on your property when paying your taxes, but not receiving the service, and we're talking about water and sewer again, then you probably agree that it's unfair. But what happens when they simply create a new wastewater fee to add to water bills for those who are now on municipal supply, but they leave that base rate component in place? They get to keep collecting from you and charging more for others. Do you really care what they're collecting it for if they keep making you pay for it anyway, whether you have the service or not? Don't be deceived by any interim drop in the base rate on taxes. The new Bill 340 or the MOU or whatever the heck we want to call it, did put more money into the coffers of the CBRM for the first few years. But as a recap, the issue with that new municipal service reform deal was that it will run the CBRM back into the red in a few years time, essentially having done some interesting things, but not setting the stage for a clear path to financial viability. So if you see a little drop, expect it to quickly disappear unless things change considerably over the next few years. Now, the wastewater issue paper just delivered to CBRM Council specifically says, quote, a potential reduction to the base tax rate, which also means that there's the potential that there may not be a reduction at all or that any reduction won't come from the wastewater component. These are the things you have to watch for. As Mary Campbell of the Cape Breton Spectator taught us all, a single word can change the entire outcome of something as it did with the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board's ruling over the squabble of allowing the proposed Big Pond RV development not to go ahead. And it was based on how the planners quoted the existing planning strategy. One misquoted word completely changed everything. So what would you really expect from a municipality desperate for revenue? A tax break? or charging more fees and keeping taxes in place. Now, Mayor McDougall wasn't present for the meeting, but might want to weigh in on the topic. After all, when John Lohr and Municipal Affairs suggested that the CBRM didn't have to pay the province for corrections and public housing, but they could keep the tax rate in place and use it for their own purposes, she called that a pass-through tax and was adamant that they can't collect from taxpayers what they aren't required to pay anymore. So if you have to start charging those of us who have water and sewer connections on CBRM infrastructure, but keep the same equivalent rate that was previously charged embedded within our CBRM wide base rate, then it's kind of doing the same thing that you scolded John Lohr for suggesting. But wait, let's rewind. Do you remember that I conceded that there is an element of fairness in trying to align taxes with the services rendered and that there was a way to understand how this potentially could help reduce water consumption? It's not like buses. If I have water hookup, I use it. If water comes in, almost every drop goes back out. And you can forget it, folks. They're not going to give you a discount for peeing somewhere else or watering your lawn. Now, we might start seeing a market for rainwater collection drums. Sure. But hopefully folks won't start skipping baths, sharing the bath water, or limiting teenagers to under 57 minutes in the shower. So let's get past that and move on to fairness, because I really believe the biggest administrative priority here is really just finding out where to tap into more revenue to pay for rising service delivery and infrastructure development and maintenance, and not so much a real concern for fairness at all. Now, am I being unreasonable? 
Am I just a moderately inconsequential video podcaster who wants to back you all into a corner at every possible opportunity? Now, I think there's always validity in trying to understand the mindset of a critic or someone viewed as oppositional, aka the entire partisan political system, including the one that infiltrates the CBRM itself. So I'll allow for a little ad hominem if you'd like to dismiss my comments in such a manner. But the antidote for being dismissed because your motivation is questioned is dropping a little logic bomb into the conversation, not unlike one of those colorful, nice smelling bath bombs that might be necessary to drop into the tub water families are sharing like back in the day. Now, if you hauled the water by bucket directly from the well and heated it on the wood stove, you can be damn sure everyone is taking a dip in the same water, right? At least that seems to be how it is in all the old Western movies. But here's the logic and it's not hard to explain. If you're gonna pitch introducing these user fees based on fairness, how on earth can you do that with a straight face while doing absolutely nothing about fixing the tax cap that creates incredible unfairness in the amounts of hundreds or even thousands of dollars in unfair and distorted variation among CBRM homeowners and what they're paying for their taxes. Now, I don't wanna hear that the mayor supported it as the president of the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities. We really didn't hear it while she was actually in the role. And I don't wanna hear that the CAO, the CFO and their staff support it for operations because for obvious reasons, when your job is to keep things running and to balance the books, what else would these executives be expected to do? I also don't wanna hear that counselors reaffirm that they're all about getting it sorted out too because in Bill 340, you had a copy of the CERMGAR wish list and it wasn't a priority in there. Sure, removing education off our books, your idea, or getting the province to take over our police force, definitely my idea and not in the report, would have allowed for tax rate reductions, but it absolutely would not have corrected the incredible unfairness and harm to the growth of our tax base and harm to the financial well-being of individuals and families here, both homeowners and renters alike, who don't have much cap protection while others have held the cap since its inception and only see annual inflationary increases to their capped assessment not the market value. If you're not pressing on that broken system, you really think the discussion of introducing user fees of wastewater management is supposed to be a topic to demonstrate your commitment and concern for fairness to taxpayers? I certainly don't. And since I mentioned some nuance here, I think it'd be fun to share a comment from a local fella named Donnie Calabrese, who spotted a little catch-22 when commenting on the proposal on Twitter. Donnie tweeted saying, I'm hereby proposing that rural people pay more for police, garbage, and snow removal because they live far away. Now, he's a guy known for his sharp wit, but his comment isn't entirely off track. It's more efficient and less costly per resident to service more densely populated geographies, the metro areas, the cities. And I don't know if he'd want you to consider changing the rates associated with these services where they're more costly to deliver, but he could certainly make the argument because that's what's happening now with wastewater. Some folks are of the school of thought that we all contribute and share the burden of keeping the entire municipality going, and others think that fairness is segmenting taxes into various components they serve and then taxing different areas of the municipality based on their differences in utilization. As I've made clear, while I'm glad we have intelligent local folks who can spot these details so quickly, I'd love it if we actually had some of them on council. But the point I'll leave you with today is that if you really wanna present this as though it's about fairness and taxation, then we had better hear you reestablish your demands for fixing the tax cap now, the way you suddenly fell back in love with the topic of equalization once Houston stomped on your toes, took the $15 million back, and stuck you with a deal for Bill 340 that'll see you begging for more in a few years for those of you who survive the next election. If I were mayor, I'd be pursuing more intelligent methods of correcting that tax cap system before I start scraping the bottom of another barrel to squeeze more out of the CBRM taxpayers than we already are. To make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, subscribe now to Boxer Shorts Media via your choice of YouTube or Facebook. Please hang up and try again.